it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. The play fake to Hill, Dalton. And they didn't wait long to take a shot there, that's for sure, but it falls incomplete, and it's second down. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. First carry now. This is Hill. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. To throw here, Dalton. He'll have a first down past the 40. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. And he's brought down. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. That, quite simply, is Jeremy Hill. A very powerful, compact bat. He's always been that. Even back at LSU, that's where he honed that skill, right? Love to run between the tackles and take the contact as well as dish it out. Dalton, first and ten. And over the middle, it's LaFell. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. They'll run on first down. Hill. And he's gonna fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Dalton throwing on second down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll give him a yard on the play, and they're going to have a third down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. They look to throw on third with Dalton. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Bullock will put this one through. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3 nothing. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. 
your stadium, your crowd. You've got the ball, put points on the board first, and let everyone start to celebrate. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. The return man, Chris Moore. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Ravens offense now. They get set to head back on the field. First down, Flacco. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch... Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Fresh set of downs here. Now Flacco. Catch made there by Brett Perriman. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now a carry here for Terrence West. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. That's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. third down that's West and he's going to be met at about the 43 it'll be called a gain of two and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call and they got awfully close now we're at fourth and inches I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And that right there is something we've seen, oh, I don't know, 15 times in NFL history. That will officially go down as a 60-yard field goal. And everything has to be absolutely perfect for this to have any chance. He's got to get it out low and really drive through it. And I tell you, that was one heck of a kick, one heck of a decision on the sideline to even try it as well. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super tough. 
so. <laughs> and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Dalton now to pass. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. That brings up third down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. He's got his man here. It's green. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Hill. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. I'm ready now for second and nine. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. Underneath here to Hill. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And the Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. <laughs> and he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. First and 10 for Dalton. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. On second down, Hill. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They run it again with Hill. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Second down following the run. They'll go option to the short side. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Andy Dalton, 14 yards. And the Bengals are in for six. So they're down in the red zone. They opt to utilize his legs instead of the arm. It works out pretty well. I like what they were thinking there because in most situations now, defense is accounting for 
all the other runners on the field and, of course, for pass plays. But the quarterback position, oftentimes it is unaccounted for. Offense coordinator felt it, dialed it right up. Inside the red zone, is this something teams should maybe, depending on the quarterback, do more often? Definitely. If you've got a quarterback who can actually move it with his legs, that's an extra option and an extra weapon for you. I think they should utilize it more often. Bullock out now to kick this one away. To return, here's Michael Campanero. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. On the ground, it's West again. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get four yards of the carry there, and we will get to the end of the first quarter of play. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They'll come up on a third and four here to start things out. From the gun, Flacco. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. On is the putter, Cook, who sends it away. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. That'll bring up second down. I know I'm not giving enough credit to the defenders because that pass was incomplete. But come on, it was A.J. Green. I always expect him to come up with the ball. Yeah, on those deep routes especially, even on incompletions, it's fun to watch him run those routes. Uh, it certainly is. But he eats up ground, and he usually goes up and gets it. Passing again. Dalton on second and ten. Oh, now backing up, and he's out of the end zone. The referee was right there to call it, and that is a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. So they will accept the penalty and move forward.
Now a play fake here on first down. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Carlos Dunlap. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Brett Perriman there. And it's third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Third and long for Joe Flacco. Throw right side to Perriman, and it's caught. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Sam Cook now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Jones on the return. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals take possession. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. They don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. They begin the drive with him. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty can make moves make people miss but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down that's some of the benefits of that speed not just outrunning people in the secondary but led to a really nice game they stick on the ground on first down with hill and he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down I'd say the staff that's up in the booth watching the game, they may want to file that one away. See how fast the free safety closed to make that play? Might want to check into a throw the next time. Watch left, watch left, watch left. He's stopping, he's stopping here. It's second down. Dalton looking. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a 10th carry for Hill. And he's brought down. Another nice game, 13 yards that time and another first down. And that's how you run the football and run it successfully. Big time chunk of yardage picked up, but why? Offensive lineman won at the point of attack. They're leveraged way better than the defenders. The low man wins when you're getting underneath and trying to move people. And that's exactly what happened on that play. The offensive line moved the defensive front, created space, and the end result, a fantastic run. Oh, well, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. He got 29 yards that time. 
Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. And Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is... And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Tyler Eifert, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals add on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. And he knocks it through. out now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Watson, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Going long here for Wallace. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. That uh, brings up third down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Partner, I think a lot of people thought that Baltimore would draft at least one runner. In fact, they didn't take any skill position players in the draft, so I think a lot's still going to fall on Terrence West. Well, he did have over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, a career high. They'll run again here with West. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. This is West, and he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. A break from the ground game here. Flacco. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. But in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. 
All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. And he'll get only a couple down to the 44. Pretty good level two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try to defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Ravens on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Flacco fakes the give, sets the throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, You've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down, Hill, and they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Carlos Dunlap in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Second down, Flacco now. He hits West underneath. Give him two yards on that play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Now it's Woodhead. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. And now the Bengal 
defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. <laughs> so possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. A first down throw coming for Dalton. Caught Eifert over the middle. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Second down, Dalton. Now right side completion here by LaFell. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. Now he's hit, and Dalton lost the football. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And the pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't it? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within this, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. Open man left side is Wallace complete. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. in the red zone this time. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. The veteran Jeremy Macklin was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Once more, it's Flacco. They shakes him off. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose, and the Bengals have recovered it. 
So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we send you down to Orlando in our Tiburon Studios, where Larry Ridley's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But well, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons, the ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season, four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. They go play action here on first down. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Michael Johnson, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. his way forward here for a good little gain. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. The Ravens on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is going to be third and 13. Operating up play action. Flacco looking deep here for Macklin. That is caught by Macklin for a Raven touchdown. Jeremy Macklin, 49 yards. And the Ravens have cut it to within a score. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. The play fake to Hill. Dalton. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. On second down now, Hill, and he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this will be caught at the 30. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Giovanni Bernard, 77 yards. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. But he's used to running at that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. out now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter. Went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? The drive begins with a handoff to West. And he's brought down after a good game. That good for 22 and a first down. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender's bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. Muscling free near the 40. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now West. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. time they say uh uh as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage he lost two there and it's third down well partner i guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy some say run until they absolutely stop you and others say well when you think they're about to stop you fool them a little bit i guess they should have tried to fool them on that play passing play flacco and incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. 
Well, there's two sides here. I guess you could pinpoint and look at the offense and say, oh, man, what a disaster. Hey, the defense, though, they came through. Preparation's the key to everything, and when you're on the defensive side of the ball and in special teams meetings, you prepare for plays like this, and in this case, they were actually able to win it. Dalton, first and ten. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Now, that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. They'll run on first down. Hill, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Dalton throwing on second down. He played to the right side. It's Eifert. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. Dalton to Hill on the draw. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. And the Bengals on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This time, it's third and three. Passing, it's Dalton. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. The connection since 2011, Dalton to Green for a Bengal first down. He's played a great game and continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish, because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. We've got them now. To throw on second down. Dalton, that's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And all the way down inside the 5 to the 4. A Bengal first down. Dalton hitting LaFell. Another nice pickup through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. 
From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Following the penalty, it's Hill. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and that is going to set up third and goal. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Dalton gives to Bernard. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Only able to pick up a yard, and that's going to leave him with a long fourth and goal. This offense bent the defense in their long drive downfield, but once they got within sight of the goal line, the defense went to don't break mode and is stiffened. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. And Bullock will put this one through, and that will make this now a 15-point advantage. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. was the intended target and it's second down well they're slinging it and then there's one you got to put a timer on huh i mean that one came in hot that came in hot but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete 10 yards still left on second down from the gun flacco throwing right and that's complete that catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Throw left side, complete. It's Wallace, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They'll run for it with West. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short. And he didn't get there. 
John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it this time doesn't work out and the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now a play fake here on first down. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Terrell Suggs in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And once again, Hill, he's been busy. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. The four-yard pickup, that gets him going forward, but still 15 yards left on third down. And the Bengals on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This will be third and 15. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Here's Kevin Huber now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off, and he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> that was planned going into it. Not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold but it up. But he trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much. And I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. <laughs> we'll see what his offense can do. A gain of six there on first. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second down and four. Flacco from the gun. Under pressure, and Flacco's going to be dropped. Carlos Dunlap. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Third and long for Joe Flacco. And he's got his man. That's Macklin. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. First down now, but the clock continues to move. First and 10 here for Flacco. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Michael Johnson in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Flacco off play action. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. Flacco.
Mexico. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked by Nick Vigil, and he'll take this back down inside the 20. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turned to block, find a spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. This is Hill, and able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On second down, Hill. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. And his kick is good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us want to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit. Taking over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This fielded at the two. Well, in this one, partner, we had some action all the way down to the final whistle there with the late points and then the kickoff to end it. Yeah, and the best part about it is just seeing how teams battled all the way to the end, you know. Didn't really matter. The scoreboard was pretty well set, but they still competed until the final whistle. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Bengals as we say.